I'm getting ready for nationals with the last Math Counts Mini of the year. And if you're going to nationals too, I want you to bring me a team t-shirt. I've run out of other people's team t-shirts, so I'm wearing my own. All right, let's get started. We're looking for the sum of all values of x that satisfy this mess of an equation. All right, we need to start off by simplifying this a little bit. I'm going to drop in ones as these exponents, and we see that we have a quotient, same base on the left-hand side, so we can simplify that, write that base, and then just take the difference of the exponents. x minus 3, we subtract 1, we get x minus 4. We can do the same thing on the right-hand side. We get x raised to the 1 minus 4 over the x power. So the bases here are the same. This is a much more civilized equation than that. So these two sides will be the same if the exponents are the same. So we know that if x minus 4 equals 1 minus 4 over x, then these two expressions are equal. So we can just find the values of x that satisfy this. Multiply both sides by x. x squared minus 4x equals x minus 4. Bring everything over to the left-hand side, we get a quadratic x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Then we just factor. We get x minus 4 times x minus 1 equals 0. Now pop the solutions, x equals 4 and x equals 1. I feel a little suspicious. This was number 28 on the state sprint round. I'm expecting something a little trickier than this, so I'm going to go looking for that trick First, I'm going to check these two answers, because maybe one of them doesn't work. I'm going to take the 4, put it up in here, make it 4 raised to the 4 minus 3, that's 4 to the 1st, divided by 4, that gives me 1. Over here, I've got 4 on top, and I've got 4 raised to the 4 over 4 is 1, so 4 over 4, that also gives me 1, so x equals 4 works. Then I take x equals 1, I put that up there, and ho, oh, now I see the trick. It's going to work when I put 1 up here, because you raise 1 to anything, and you get 1. So you're just going to have a mess of 1s here. You're going to have 1 over 1 equals 1 over 1. These two are going to be equal when x equals 1, even if the exponents weren't the same. Oh, man, that's tricky. All we did here was we found out when are the exponents the same, but there might be times when the exponents are different, but these two expressions still come out to be the same, because that's what would happen. If you had 1 in here as the base and different numbers in the exponents, because that's like 1 to the 5th is the same as 1 to the 7th. Are there any other numbers like that? Numbers like 1 that you can raise to different powers and get the same result. If I know one number like that, 0. I can square that, I can cube it, I can raise it to 4th, I'm going to get 0 every time. So I have to check 0. <laughs> oh boy, you put 0 in there, you make a big mess. You can't put 0 in there. Now, unfortunately, we don't even really have to care about 0 because we're looking for the sum of all values of x. 0 is not going to contribute anything to that sum, even if it did work. But are there any other numbers we have to check out? I don't have to worry about 2 because if you raise 2 to different powers, you get different magnitudes. So you can't ever get the same result raising 2 to different powers. And, well, it seems like most numbers work like that. Well, except for 1, and except for 0, and except for negative 1. If I raise negative 1 to the second power, the fourth power, sixth power, any even power, I get 1. Raise it to any odd power, I get negative 1. So we have to check negative 1, because we can raise negative 1 to different powers and get the same result. So let's try it right here. I've got on top here, I've got negative 1 to the negative 4. On the bottom, I'll have a negative 1. My numerator comes out to 1. Divide that by negative 1, I get negative 1. Now, over here, I'll have negative 1 divided by negative 1 raised to the negative 4 power. Negative 1 raised to the negative 4 is still 1. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. These two do come out to be the same when x is negative 1. And there's that tricky extra solution. These are my three solutions for x. We add them up. 4 and 1 is 5. Add that negative 1. And we have 4 as our answer. We're ready for the next problem. Oh, uh, let's see here. A is a number such that this pretty scary system of equations has an odd number of distinct solutions. We're looking for the product of all possible values of A. I'm not really sure what all this stuff down here means. I'm going to focus on these two equations, see these absolute values, and 
I'm a little scared of going after it with algebra right away. So when I see that X and Y, I start thinking pictures. I'm going to draw a graph. And maybe, maybe a picture will guide us, guide us to the solution. I'm going to start with this first equation because it's a lot less scary because it doesn't have an A. And when I graph absolute value, the first thing I do is I get rid of the absolute value. I think about what happens when that absolute value is 0. When x is 0, y has to be negative 5. So I got one point on my graph, one down and a whole lot more to go. Now what happens when x isn't 0? Well, when x is positive, when we're looking over there, then this absolute value, well, we can just ignore it. Because 2x, when x is positive, 2x is going to be positive. So the absolute value of 2x is just 2x. So we'll get 2x minus y is 5. Of course, that's just a linear equation. This is a line with slope 2. So when we're going that way, where x is positive, we're going to get a line out here with slope 2. So it's going to go right through x is 2 and a half and y is 0. We can see how that works up here. Now what happens when we're coming this way? When x is less than 0, then the absolute value of 2x now is negative 2x. Because when x is less than 0, then negative 2x will be positive, And that's what we need coming out of that absolute value. Once again, linear equation, we're coming this way. But now our slope is negative 2. We're coming back this way, like this. Let's go ahead and put in our tick marks there. And there's our graph of that first equation. What about this second equation? Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring that absolute value over there, focus right on that x, and just like I did before, I'm going to start with where the absolute value is 0, which is y equals negative 1. I put y equals negative 1 in there, and I get x equals a coming out. Uh, I'm going to say just I'm going to pick one value of a. What happens if this is a? I know that x equals a comes out when y is negative 1. I get that point right there. Now what happens if we increase y from negative 1? Say bring it up to 0, then I get x is a plus 2. x gets a little bit bigger. If I increase y to 1, I'm going to get x is a plus 4, and on and on and on. I'm going to get a line there, just like that, with slope 1 half. Now what happens if y goes down from negative 1? Go from negative 1 down to negative 2. I'm going to have the absolute value of negative 2. That's 2. I'm going to get x is a plus 2. So as y goes down from negative 1, x is going up and up and up from a. And I get the other branch of my absolute value. I get a v pointing this way. And I want to figure out now, where do these systems, well, what are the solutions to this system? The solution to this system, well, there's not one. These two graphs don't intersect. It's when these graphs intersect that I have a solution to this system. But that's only for this value of a. What happens if we change a? Well, if we increase a, all we're going to do is move this point out that way. This v is going to move this way. This point on the v is always at y equals negative 1. When we change a, all we're doing is moving the graph out, bringing it back. Well, we're not going to get any solutions moving it that way. We're going to bring it back this way. So we're going to bring a way back until we hit our first graph. We're going to have something like this. And this is going to happen when y equals negative 1. Because we know that that point there is when y equals negative 1. But what's x here? Well, that's where we go back to this graph. We put y equals negative 1 back in our first equation, and we get the absolute value of 2x has to be 4. That means x is 2. That's what it looks like on the graph, too. But I also have negative 2 popping out. What's that all about? Oh, I see what's happening there. And x equals negative 2. When we come all the way back here, I'm going to get this. I'm going to drop the point of my sideways v on this branch of the graph right here. Now, let's focus on this one right here first. Now, right here, my system has exactly one solution. It's this point right here. Only one solution. That's an odd number of solutions. So this works. So I want to figure out what A is when this V hits right there. Well, right there, we know that X is 2, Y is negative 1. We come back up here. 
when y is negative 1, x has to be a. So x is 2 when a is 2. And the same thing's happening over here. Over here, x is negative 2, y is negative 1. I put it right up in here, and I get a is negative 2. So that's going to happen when a is negative 2. And we're over here, we see we get three solutions. We get one up here, we get one on this branch, and we get one back here. Three intersection points are the graphs of our two equations. But what's happening in between? In between these, I get something like this. I'm always going to end up with two solutions. I'm going to have one up here and one down here. So I'm not going to have any cases where my system has an odd number of solutions between here and here. What happens if I keep coming this way? Well, now, now it looks like I'm always going to get four solutions. I'm going to get two up here and two down there. It's awfully tempting to stop here and go two times negative two, and we're all done. We get a negative four, and we move on. But we look back at this. We think back to that last problem and think, is there something sneaky happening? If we keep pulling this back, we're going to hit somewhere like this, where the bottom branch here goes right through the bottom point of the first graph. I get one solution down here and two more up here. Three solutions. That's odd. So I have to figure out what A is in this case as well. Now in this case, I know that this graph, this sideways V, is going through this point right here where X is 0 and Y is negative 5. So let's see what A is for that. X is 0. And then I put y equals negative 5 up here. I'll get negative 10 plus 2, that's negative 8. Take the absolute value of negative 8, I get 8. So a comes out to be negative 8. When I, a is negative 8, I get this situation right here. I get three solutions. There's one more possibility. Is there any more? Let's think about what happens if we keep going this way. As we keep going this way, we'll get still two solutions up here that we're going to miss entirely on the bottom branch. So we'll always have just two solutions. Nothing else to worry about. So we got 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 times negative 8 gives us our product of all possible values of A is 32. And that was number 30 on the state sprint round. So we're ready for nationals.